Hey, welcome today to homeschooling with Zena. Zena is still here. She's around. So, um, the lesson, excuse me, that we are going to do today, now we're moving to China. Now, I skipped some lessons in India because, um, you know, sometimes I don't like doing the lesson twice. So, I do it with, with my daughter and then I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it again do it <laughs> again but you can check these out um you can look it up and 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 check it out i thought there was a lot of stuff on buddha i already did one on buddha and the monkey king i should have told you that one and we should have did that one but i decided not to do it so this is the last unit of um history one for uh, k-12 History grade one. So now we're going to start with China and we're going to begin. <clears throat> and uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this because, uh, you know, I'm living in China and I'm not very good with Chinese history. So I'm always happy to know that. Look at that beautiful picture. Too bad you can't. Can you save it? <laughs> yeah, I'll find a way to change to get this picture here. I know how to get it. So, ancient China. And I'm going to try to make this big. Bigger, bigger. Yeah. Can't see. Okay. Ancient China. Making silk and writing calligraphy were two of the arts begun in ancient China where the yellow and the Yangtze rivers flowed. Yes. Learn about the important teacher Confucius. They call him in Chinese they call him Kongzi. Kongzi. Yeah. Kongzi. And the famous Kongzi. Great Wall. So how do you say that in Chinese, Zina? Hmm? The Great Wall of China. She probably doesn't know it, um, but it's called Chang Chang. Chang Chang. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Okay. See the life li the life size, uh, soldiers guarding the tomb of the Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi. So those soldiers that guarded the the Emperor Qin. Shi Huangdi, they're called the Terracotta Soldiers or the Terracotta Warriors. Um, and then into the inventive times of the Han Dynasty. And my wife, I wanted my wife to teach this because she is my wife, if you don't know. She is Chinese. Uh, she knows all things about Chinese. Yes, I am African American. So we got together and we produced Xena. And she is the best of both of us. Sometimes the worst. Yeah. But, so, here we go. I think I'll just make a screenshot of this. Because it's such a beautiful picture. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So, farming in ancient China... Life along the Yellow River, life along the Yangtze River. I know how Chinese farm. They have crops in their hands and mm -hmm. they put it near rivers. They have crops in their hands and they do what? And they put it near rivers and it will grow. Okay, so why did people live near rivers in ancient times? So they will have water to grow crops and have water. Okay. Where is ancient India on the map of ancient China? Okay, so we're going to look at India. So where's India? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so India is on the left. 
This is a map of ancient China. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing this is over 2,000 years ago. Something around this time. Great Wall of China. Yeah, Chang Chang is the Great Wall of China. How can they, they, there be two Great Wall of China? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, the Indus River and the Ganges River. Um, the Indus River is here, and the Ganges River is here. It goes along the India border. Okay, so as you can see, China is not. Uh, this is not China yet, right? So this is not. China, it doesn't seem like this is China yet, or maybe you have some warring factions here, but you got the Qin Dynasty, but you have India, and then you have China, and what is in between? I hope we can find out what's in between this. What river did the Egyptians use? The Nile. The Nile River. I guess it's not around here, of course. What two rivers did people in ancient Mesopotamia use? The Tigris and the Euphrates. Good. The Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. Remember that, guys. Let's look at the answers, see if we got it right. The rivers flooded and provided rich soil to to grow crops, people could also travel on the rivers, the Indus and the Ganges, the Nile, the Tigris, and the Euphrates, right? I have to make these in 15-minute installments. Um, yellow. Yellow River. Okay. Explain that the annual flooding of rivers allowed people to grow grain, such as rice. Locate China on a map, locate the Yellow River and Yangtze Rivers. Rice. Rice. Oh, you need rice. <laughs> Look, rivers bring life. After the spring floods, rivers leave behind rich soil where crops can grow. Long ago, when civilization began in ancient Mesopotamia, people settled near rivers. People in ancient Egypt and India settled near rivers, too. Point to India on a map. We did that. Now, looking east of India, we find the vast land of China. So, we know that Alexander the Great never got to China, right? Because I think uh, some mountains, there were some things in the way of him getting to China. All right? Um, let's find China. So when people settled down to farm in China, where do you think they ended up? Near rivers. They first settled in the north near the Yellow River. The Yellow River is fast and can't make up its mind which way to go. It loops and wiggles in different directions. So the Yellow River... You see this? Look at this. This is the Yellow River. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The, le the Yellow River looks like it goes all the way to the Himalayan mountains. I'm thinking these are the Himalayas or these are some, the Kush, the Kush mountains maybe, or the Himalaya mountains. The Himalaya mountains didn't point this way. So maybe it's the Kush mountains, which we didn't learn about yet. Kush. Um... So, we're going to go to the next bar here. Let's find the Yellow River on the map and outline it, outline it in yellow. We'll start in the mountains where the river begins and follow it to the sea. So, I guess it goes... This is the mouth of the river. Oh, no. This is the Yangtze River. Okay, so the Yellow River starts at the mouth of the... 
mountain and it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, and then out into the sea, into the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Then why is it called yellow? Because the wind blows a yellowish soil into the water. When the river floods, the soil is left behind. It's as fine as flour, and people discovered it was good for growing millet, a kind of grain they made into cereal. Millet is kind of like, almost like corn, you know? The Yellow River is China's most important river in the north. The soil along much of the river is yellow in color, and that's what gives the river its name. So we're going to, I'm going to steal this picture because I like it. Steal? <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh, look at these little worms. Oh, I know. They will grow into moths. Like silkworms. Look closely at the mulberry leaves that grow along the banks. You may find them covered with silkworms. From the cocoon of the silkworm comes a shiny thread that can be woven into beautiful cloth called silk. They only eat one kind of leaves. Do you see that green along the river? Uh, that's bamboo. Bamboo forests have been cut down in the past to make room for houses. But now China is working to protect the bamboo because pandas need bamboo to eat. They're the only animal that can eat bamboo because bamboo has so, poison. Bamboo has poison in it? Yes. It's really? poison and it's hard to bite. So you're saying that the panda is the only animal that can eat bamboo. Mm, I didn't know that, guys. She can teach me a thing or two about a thing or two. So pandas eat bamboo from morning to night. In fact, panda means bamboo eater. Oh, I didn't know that. Shu Mao. So, yeah, so we in Chinese we call a panda Shu. Shu how does that? Shu Mao. Shu Mao. So, in fact, panda means bamboo eater. These giant pandas are known as China's treasure because they live nowhere else on earth. It's kind of like America's bald eagle. Okay. Its color is like America's bald eagle. And Australia's kangaroo. Australia kangaroo. For thousands of miles, on and on it goes. What is it? It's a wall. Not just any wall. It's the Great Wall of China. This 2,000-year-old zigzag... 2,000-year-old wall zigzags across the Yellow River. Long ago, it was built... To keep out fierce invaders from the north. The Yellow River provides people with fresh water, fish, and a way to travel. After it floods, it leaves behind good, rich dirt Soil. called silt. Can you say silt? Silk. Silt. Silt. S-I-L-T. The Yellow River winds on, bringing life to the land and people of China. Later, people settled to the south near the Yangtze River. This river deserves its name because Yangtze means long river. Hold on. Sorry, my son is going crazy. So, um, because Yangtze, this river deserves its long, uh, its name because Yangtze means long river. Really, I didn't know that. I can speak Chinese. I didn't know that. Yang. 
I thought yang means ticklish. Yang is long, and si means river. Yang si. Ah, I thought it, long means chang. Chang. Mhm. Mm sometimes skinny, sometimes wide. It's the greater, the greatest waterway in China. The Yangtze is almost four thousand miles long. Let's say the name of the river together, Yangtze. Yangtze. Let's find the Yangtze River on the map and outline it in blue. Okay, blah, so blah, blah, blah. you know that this is the Yangtze River is very long. Wow, look at this. This must be like five hundred miles. This this thing right here. Wow, very very long. Okay, the Yangtze is like the the veins in your skin. It's like the veins of China, the lifeblood of China. Okay. So farming along the Yangtze. Let's look at it. If the Yangtze River has no water left, they will go to the other river and try to take the part. Rich soil makes the Yangtze banks good farmland. Uh huh. Blow. Rich soil. See, along the river, it's going to, the planting is going to be especially good. We've learned that throughout history. Okay, people discovered that land near the Yangtze River was the perfect place to plant rice. Rice needs two things to grow, water and hard work by those who plant it. Let's imagine a boy named Lu who lived in ancient China near the Yangtze River. Lu is seven years old. He and his family know all about hard work. Okay, so now we're going to listen to this story. A raid. Lou listens to the river. Lou woke up before anyone else in the one-room house. His parents and sister were still asleep when he tiptoed to the door and peeked out. The sky was just turning a lovely clear pink. He could hear the roar of the Yangtze River a mile away, squeezing itself between high walls of rock, rushing toward the distant sea. Every spring, melting snow flowed down from the mountains and fattened the river. This year, the floods were heavier than usual. Water had filled the rice paddies near the river, but had not yet drained away. Until it flowed back to the river, Lou's father couldn't plow the paddies or plant rice seedlings. The Yangtze is in a hurry today, thought Lou as he started his chores, but not as much as yesterday. Father will be pleased. The boy was relieved. His father planted rice twice every year. Rice was the family's main food. Without it, they had only a rare piece of fish or pork to eat. Lou put his sleeping mat outside to air. He fed the three pigs, who thanked him with grunts. His next job was to wake his father. Lou did this every morning. As the only son, it was his duty, and Lou wanted to be a good son. He went back inside and knelt beside his father's mat. Father, Lou whispered, "Are you awake? Is there anything I can do for you?" His father opened one eye and squinted. "Have you listened to the river yet?" he asked. "It's singing more softly," said Lou. "Ah," his father said, rising from his mat. "Then perhaps the water is only ankle high, and I can prepare the field." By now, Lou's sister had gone to the well for water. 
After she returned, Lou's mother would boil rice and make tea for breakfast. When she lit a fire in a clay stove in the middle of the room, smoke escaped through a hole in the ceiling. Lou's mother reached into a pot for another handful of rice. She frowned. The pot will be empty soon, she said. Lately, the worried woman repeated the same phrase every morning, as if speaking the words would somehow fill the pot. Take heart, mother, said Lou's father. Our son has listened to the river and thinks it may be down. Today I might plow. Will you prepare rice cakes for my midday meal? And Lou, will you bring them to me? Lou, who wanted to be a good son, replied, I will, father, but may I walk with you behind the plow, too? Lou's father was quiet. He needed help, it was true. But the water buffalo that pulled the plow was too strong for Lou's arms. Bring the meal, Lou, his father answered at last. That will be help enough. Lou was disappointed. After a day of plowing, father always came home silent and tired, and walking in the water for hours wrinkled the skin on his feet. Then may I plant the seedlings? he asked. Again his father paused. Planting meant wading backwards in the water under a hot sun and leaning down to place the seedlings in straight rows. Lou's back muscles weren't strong enough to stoop over all day. His father thought for a moment. I may use you in a few months during harvest time, he answered. Yes, father, agreed Lou. When the long stalks are heavy with rice, I can cut them with the sickle. Perhaps, his father said, he knew Lou wasn't old enough to handle the sharp curved tool either. Or you can gather and bind the stalks after they are cut. That would help me most of all. Lou was satisfied. His father went to the fields. At midday, the boy balanced a pole across his shoulders. His mother hung a pail of water on one side and a pail of rice cakes on the other. Lou followed a path through the trees down to the paddies by the Yangtze River. He could see his father and the other men of the village plowing the curved ridges. Father, he called, the water has gone back into the river. Lou, father called back, you listened well. You are a good son. Okay, that was an interesting story. So, uh, where is China on your map? So you already know that. Right here. Where is the Yellow River? Where is the Yangtze River? You know the Yangtze River is right here. And then the Yellow River is up here. Um, where did people in ancient China settle down to farm? Where did the people in ancient near, China settle down to near farm? Near the rivers. The yeah. Yellow River. Near the Yellow River. Very good. Where did people in, oh, sorry. How did the rivers help people grow food? They may they may they. After they flood, they left rich soil right. in, the, in the dirt. What do you call that rich soil? Pond silt. Silt. Good. Silt. Okay. Um, we read a story about a boy named Lou who lived near the Yangtze River. What did Lou's father grow? What kind of food did he grow? Rice. Yes, good. Right, it's very important in that 
time. It's they important can. now. It's still important, right? Because if they don't have rice to plant, they didn't have a lot of food to eat. Mm -hmm. So they will starve. Mostly. Okay. Uh... Okay, so now it's, it's, it has some materials you got to use like before. So I hope that you like this lesson. Um, you can read this right here. Pause it and read it. And um, yeah, so I'll see, we'll see you next time. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Goodbye, guys.